this is for, this is our tutorial for wrapping our gift baskets. Once again, this is just for the people in our ministry who have volunteered to help us with our gift baskets, but if it serves, you know, as good information for other people, good gravy. Okay, what you're going to need, of course, is your basket of food. Now, this doesn't typically represent like what our baskets really look like or what they're going to look like, but I'm just using this as an example. If you can find a container or a lid that's about the size of your basic roasting pan, like about 22 inches wide, that, that's, a good, uh, that's a good size to work with. Um, don't worry about what the food looks like now because when you get to our, um, our packing night, we're going to show you how to pack it. So right now, I want you to focus on wrapping it up and making it look good rather than packing it right now. So what you're going to need, of course, is this. You're also going to need a roll of tape. Now, if you want to use scotch tape, that's fine. With me, I like using big things in bulk that don't run out. And for me, that's packing tape or moving tape. As soon as they make scotch tape in this size, I'm right there. You're also going to need a roll of plastic, like either cellophane or cello, which is cheaper, but it's a good roll. And this is a little over three feet long. That's the roll, size roll that we use. Sometimes it's a little shorter, but it's these are the really long rolls that we like because it covers both sides pretty well. You're also going to need that sharp pair of scissors again that we use for our bow. And speaking of, you're going to need the bow that you made in the previous tutorial. So with that, let's get started. First, before you, your hands get too busy to do it, you're going to make a few tabs of your tape. That way you won't have to let go of everything just to put your, you know, just to go and get some tape. So what I normally do, I cut up maybe a little square, maybe about an inch, not that much because it's not, it's not supposed to show. So I just put it on the side of the table that I'm working with, about four pieces. Maybe six just in case. Because it's plastic. When you start fighting with the plastic, sometimes the plastic wins. So I'm just going to make a few extra. All right. Now, as far as your plastic wrap, which nowadays you don't have to exactly go to a craft store to get, but you'll find them in craft stores. You can pretty much get this anywhere. You can get a basket. But you're gonna roll this flat with the roll coming towards you. That way you get to control better how much you're going to be using. And one thing I really hate is waste. So we don't want to waste any plastic. So we're going to roll this with a little bit more out front. How much, you know, before we start going into how much of this and how many inches that, just roll out enough so that when you put your basket on, and this is really heavy, don't worry about too heavy, how heavy it's going to be because our baskets are going to be heavy. So it's best that you practice with real food or something equally, you know, equal weight so that you can get used to handling a basket of this size. Okay, you want to make sure that both, that your, that your basket is positioned so that both ends of your plastic wrap come up equally or as equally as possible. So I need to put mine right there. That way you don't have to worry about lifting this anymore. And once you get the packed basket, you shouldn't have to lift it anymore. 
except to position it underneath, you know, to position the plastic underneath. The rest of it, I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible because when we do our wrapping, somehow, every, you know, things tend to come out a little crazy. And this step, this tutorial is supposed to prevent that. So, once you have that positioned to where it comes up equally on both sides, and also that you have enough in front, this is very important, so that it will cover, not just cover the front of your basket, but cover it so that you can hold it. Put, if you put your fist on the tallest object in your basket, that's how, that's how much plastic you should have. Okay, so this is gonna take a few more inches. You shouldn't have to, if you get it too short, just push forward, basket forward, and push it back while keeping the plastic. That way you don't have to lift. And you can still control how much is coming up. Okay, so this needs a few more inches. Just enough so you'd be able to hold, because this is going to be your finishing step when you bind all the sides. You're going to have this in front of you, and you, want to, you don't want to have a whole lot in here because that's wasteful. So just enough to go beyond your fist so that you'll be able to tie it off, that's how much you need. So this is perfect. So when you have that much in front, you're going to need that much in back. So you bring up your roll to meet that spot. That's how much you need. Get your sharp scissors. And the thing about plastic is sometimes you don't need your scissors because it tears anyway. But you give it a little snip. The thing is to do it straight across. And I've been using these scissors a little bit too much, so it's time to sharpen them. Trust me, I have about 11 pairs of scissors. And at some stage or another, they all need sharpening. So I don't want to hear any comments about me sharpening my scissors. I already know I need to sharpen my scissors. Okay. I thought these were the sharp pair of scissors, by the way. My mistake, but I can work with it. Anyway, now that you have this, now that you have cut off your plastic, you're going to create a bag. Okay, this is how we do it. On your side, see that middle part? The middle part comes up first. Then the back comes to the center. Everything you can bring to the center. Like this. Okay, then you're going to bring the front part to, towards the back. Okay. You should be able to hold it with two fingers. Okay, this is your middle part, back, front. That's your formula, okay? Middle first, then back to front, front to back, okay? Take off your tape and you put it right there. And like I said, sometimes your tape does not want to behave. That's why you put an extra. Best to get the clear tape, please do not get the invisible tape because invisible tape is not invisible. Get your clear plastic tape. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Middle comes up first. And we're gonna fold the back to the front. Together, that's where you're going to take. 
it's really that easy to make a bag. Okay, now this is how we're going to close it up. And using this method, you can wrap any size basket. You don't have to worry about how big your bag is, because you already made your bag. Okay, now, if you've done that, you're going to pull up. Okay. Remember that fist in the middle? That's going to be your guide. Make sure your fist is dead center, because that's where everything is coming up. Everything that you bring up is coming up into that fist. It's coming up to that joining part. Okay? You don't want any air holes. You don't want it, you know, any, any air coming in here. You want it to actually look like shrink wrap. A lot of the baskets that I've done, when I do it in plastic, people say that they look like they've been shrink wrapped, which I take as a compliment because they've been wrapped just that well. And we want these to look very well wrapped. You can go, these baskets are going out to our needy in our neighborhoods, our local people who don't have food for the holidays. That's who these are going for. And some people might say, well, they don't care what the thing looks like as long as they get the food. Uh, God cares and we care. That's why we take this special effort and we make the effort to make it look as good as possible because it's a gift from God and when God gives us a gift we want it to look like it came directly from him. We want to make it look like it was a beautiful thing that was given just to them. That's how we do this. Okay? So we're just going to make sure everything comes together. And just like, you know, ladies, you're used to doing your daughter's ponytail, you know, you got to pull it up a little bit to tighten it. Okay, another issue that I always get when we get to wrapping, you take your two fingers, same two fingers that we used in the last tutorial, and you're going to give this a twist. No more than two twists, because you don't want it to be so tight that the plastic breaks. But you want it to be very well bound inside. Okay, so two twists should pretty much do it. And you should be able to hold your plastic with two fingers. Anything your anything that needs more than two fingers to hold, you've, you're wasting paper and you've done it wrong. You've wrapped it wrong. You should only be able to have this much. This is actually perfect. I shouldn't even have to cut off the top of it. Um, afterwards. But this is the size I'm looking for. I'm not looking for any tree trunks of plastic around here. I'm looking for just this much. Why? Because your last step is to put on your bow. And you don't want this to be wrapped around a huge wad of plastic. You want this to look nice. The whole point of this is to make it look nice and beautiful. Okay, enough of my step with life impersonation. So you're going to take the back of your bow that has the wire, and this is why we use the wire instead of the Bodabra bow wire, because this you can actually twist with one hand. Bodabra wire you can twist, but not so much with one hand. So you wrap that around your gathering. I'm going to turn this around. They can see, even you know whether you can see it or not, you'll be able to feel it. Those two pieces of wire are back here, just like those old loaves of bread. When they came with the wire on them, you just twist it. You can twist it as many times as you want, doesn't matter to me. But when you finish twisting, you curve it under. Some of your bows might come with really long wire, like maybe out to here. That you can cut off, or you can curve that under. We just we just don't want any sharp pieces here because that wire is sharp. So just curve it under as a courtesy to the person who's going to be unwrapping it. Okay. Now this is just me, of course, being a Stepford wife, but not sounding like one. You want to make this look nice. So make sure that your tails 
a plane down as much as possible. And make sure that your loops of your bow are fluffed out. And yeah, you might, with this kind of metallic ribbon, you might have to fight with that tail a little bit. But that's only, you know, if you're a perfectionist like me. And this is probably the only time you're ever going to hear me call myself a perfectionist. When it comes to making these baskets look good, yes, I'm a perfectionist. So, the whole idea, like I said, we shouldn't, we don't have to cut this one, but if your plastic comes up higher than your uh, bow, then you're going to have to clip it because we want the emphasis to be on the bow and not on the plastic. That's basically, you know, how we wrap our baskets. And when you get here, this is what you're going to have to do. No matter what station we put you on at the beginning of the night, everybody ends up wrapping at the end of the night. So the more people that we have who know this step beforehand, the more we'll, we'll able to be spending time on the actual wrapping, on the actual working, instead of me having to teach every single person how to wrap the basket like on the job. So please study this tutorial as many times as you, you know, need to before the actual night of our packing. It will be a big help to our ministry and trust me, <laughs> you'll be rewarded for it because you won't be as frustrated with yourself and you won't, you know, you won't have to call you to the side and have to, you know, pray for you because you've gone into spasms because you think you're doing everything wrong. We don't want anybody to feel bad because, you know, you're having trouble wrapping a basket. We want everybody to be f feeling good about what we're doing, which is blessing people who don't have as much.